Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibata Lil Muttaqeen Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Sayyid Al Awwalin Wa Al Aqilin Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Atba'ihi Wa Man Tabi'ahum Bi Ihsan Ila Yawm Al-Din Wa Ba'd We have come to the conclusion of our second book on the same day. We are now at the epilogue. We did, uh, although we did skip, um, can you turn to page 170, yeah, 172, uh, uh, 72. Page 72. Yes, page 72 to page 90. We actually didn't do this yet. Now, we can do it. No, we didn't do this. We skipped it. The reason I skipped it is because Imam Ghazali, at this point in the book, you did that at top of it. I know, the middle of it, we didn't do. Uh, the reason why we skipped this, brothers and sisters, was because at this point, Imam Ghazali was going into the fiqh of these actions. Imam Ghazali's Shafi'i. And I didn't want to confuse anyone. Uh, we can still study it. And it will be good for those who follow the Shafi opinion. And also the uh, spiritual aspect will still be there. So before we read the epilogue. Before we read that. Let's go to page. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go to page 60, 76. We're going to start from there. Seventy-six. Now, I, I would just like to uh, set the stage. Um, you have to remember, Imam Ghazali now is teaching us about the ibadah, uh, the ibadat, and how to have that spiritual connection in your ibadah. That you're not just doing it. That there's actually something in your heart connected with the ibadah. So this next section, Adab al-Imama wal qudwati The Adab, the etiquette of leading and following in the prayer. He says, Yambaghi lil-Imam an yukhafif as-salah That the Imam should make the prayer brief. Actually, this is an opinion of all the scholars that the Imam should not make the prayer long. It becomes very difficult for people. Very difficult. So the, the prayer should be short. Anas radiallahu ta'ala who said, I did not pray behind anyone whose prayer was more brief or more complete than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was brief but it was complete and beautiful. The imam should not make the opening takbir if the mu'adhan is not yet finished the call to commence. So what he's saying is that if the imam, if the mu'adhan is still doing the iqama, the imam should wait till he's done. Nor before the lines are straightened. Make sure the lines are straight. The imam should raise his voice with every takbir, but the follower should only raise his voice so that he can at least hear himself. Same thing again. The imam should make the intention of leading the prayer in order to attain the merit of doing so. If he does not form this intention, then as long as his followers have made their intention to be followers, their prayer is correct, and they will attain the following, the merit of following. This is different from the Hanafi opinion, as I just said. The Imam should say the opening supplication. What is the opening supplication? Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. No, no, I'm sorry. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik, wa tabarak asm, wa ta'ala jadduk, wa la ilaha ghayru. That one. And then he should recite ta'awwad, a'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim, silently, like one praying alone. He should recite the fatiha and the surah aloud in both rakats for fajr. And two rakats of Maghrib and the first two rakats of Isha. The individual praying alone does the same. The Imam, again, brothers, don't get confused. Those who are Shafi, this is very good though. He's giving a practical, the full Salah. 
The Imam should say Amin aloud in the audible prayers, loudly, as should the followers. One second. Turn to page 166. Thirty one at the bottom. The audible Jahriya prayers are Fajr, the first two rakats of Maghrib, Isha and Juma and Eid, in which the Fatiha and the accompanying recitation is done by the uh, allowed by the Imam. Thirty two. The Amin should always be said silently in prayer according to the Hanafi school. Okay? So those of the Hanafi Madhab they say Amin quietly. Why? Well, you don't know, right? <laughs> Sounds good. Feels good too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Feels great, right? You feel it. <laughs> okay, so the reason is not based on our feelings. The reason is that every Hanafi says Amin. If you don't say Amin, you're doing something wrong. But you say it quietly. And the reason is, the hadith say, uh, I'm just giving you the Hanafi Dalil. The Hanafi, the Hanafi Dalil is, one of them is, That call on your Lord with humility and silently. This is not a direct uh, proof. It's saying in general, call on your Lord quietly. The other more solid proof is, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا قَالَ الْإِمَامْ غَيْرَ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ فَقُولُوا آمين. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the Imam says, غَيْرَ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ فَقُولُوا So you say, آمين. That's the proof. You say it, but not him. Or you say, say, but you just say it. Now, so you have it doesn't say loud. And there's another hadith where... إِذَا قَالَ الْإِمَامِ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ فَقُلْ رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدِ So the Hanafi says that the same way you say رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدِ you say Ameen, which is quietly. Okay? But, again, this is, it's not a big deal. <laughs> not a big deal at all. But the Hanafi opinion is that it's, it's quietly, not loud. Okay? Now how about the resuscitation of the Quran and, and Salah? Sometimes the Imam, you can't hear it. Yeah. He doesn't recite loud enough. No, he, he shouldn't. In Dhuhr and Asr, it's, it's quiet. Yes, but even sometimes when it's not. Oh, no, those should be loud enough so he could be heard. Yeah. What about the low, low. Yes? What about the Hadith? When it, I mean, I don't know if the Hadith now, but it coincides by saying Amin with the angels. Yeah, but it doesn't say loud. You're right. That's another one that whoever's Amin coincides with the angels, they are forgiven of their sins. But there's no indication of saying it loud there. It just says coincide. Okay? So that's the proof, just so you know what it is. We'll go into it more next week. Oh, that's in the book too. Yeah. We'll go into it inshallah. Don't worry. No big deal though. No big deal. Um, I'm sorry, where were we? Yes. Uh, back to where we were. The followers should say Amin at the same time. The Imam says Amin, not afterward. The Imam may pause for a moment of silence after Fatiha to catch his breath. During this pause in the audible prayers, the follower should recite the Fatiha silently to himself so as to enable himself to listen to the Imam while reciting. We'll do this next week. This is next week's class. See why this, uh, brothers and sisters, the reason I skipped these pages in the beginning of the year were because it's all fiqh now. If you were here for our last class, it's all about your heart and staying away from sin, correct? So this portion of the book is more about uh, the, the fiqh of the prayer. So that's why we skipped it before. Um, so continuing. The imam should not say... The follower should not recite any surah other than Fatiha 
in audible prayers except if he cannot hear the voice of the Imam. The Imam should not say more than three tasbihs while bowing and while prostrating. Okay, the Imam, when doing ruku and sajda, should only keep it up to three, according to everyone. Because people have to go. People have things to do. And right now he wants to be very, uh, you know, like, into his prayer. He should keep it to the sunnah, which is three. That's it. In your own prayer, nafl, you do as much as you want. Okay? So the imam leading should only do three. That's it. Nowadays we see opposite. When he is leading, he is making a long prayer. And that's he is alone, he is like... And that's the problem. I, hey, you're talking about me, man? Come on. <laughs> Yo, I know. I think I, I probably do do that. I probably do do that. <laughs> Stop for the love, brother. I got I to gotta fix myself, man. Stop for the love. Okay, no, listen. You're right. Uh, the prayer... <laughs> He's, he said it clear He's like nowadays this is what we see <laughs> And so far And so far uh, okay, Up until now he never said I wasn't talking about you <laughs> He just smiled That's it Okay The ruling is The imam's prayer As Imam Ghazali said Should be short Should be short And his tasbih should be short Why? Because the idea is that people come and go. Come for the prayer, go back to your work. Come for the prayer, go back home. Right now for us, going to the masjid is a 30-minute job. It's a 30-minute job. Why? I'm going to get there. The imam's going to read all this. Then he's going to do a long talim afterward. Then he's going to do this and this and this. Right? It's a 30-minute or- ordeal. That's not how it should be. It should be quick. So that you come more. Okay? Allah says, speak the truth even if it's against yourself. Um, when, I'm sorry, continuing. Uh, yes. Nor should he add anything more in the first to shahud after, after he says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. He should re- read only the Fatiha in the last two rakats. He should not lengthen the prayer for the followers. Some mushes are very long salah. Very long. <laughs> a joke. A joke, a joke. Oh, Fajr should be like a good eight, nine minutes. Okay, because it's based on the surahs that we're told to recite. There's surahs that we're supposed to recite, which are sunnah to read. Okay? So, like, I have a friend, he's in Florida, and he would leave his house two minutes after Salah starts, and he's like, I guarantee you right now, Masjid's five minutes away, I'm still going to catch the first rakah. That's how long the brother's leading prayer. And he would catch it. But, but that pushes people from going to the Masjid, if the Salah is very long. So, that's the idea, is to keep it short, so that people come and are more connected to the Masjid. So who is doing the Imam or the person who is waiting? The Imam, look, one time Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed that Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala was re- re- reading long prayers. He called him very angry. Afatanan anta? Afatanan anta? Are you a fitna? Are you causing fitna? Are you causing fitna? Read small surahs. And he told him what to read. Small, the short ones. Short surahs. No, that wasn't even Juma. Look, this one Sahabi went for Isha. He worked the whole day. The whole day. He goes for Isha, and the Sahabi starts reading long surahs. He's been working in the field the whole day. After a while, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum. He breaks the prayer, goes in the corner, Allahu Akbar, goes to the Prophet first thing in the morning. This is what he did. Maaz, Maaz went too. <laughs> <laughs> you know how both kids run to mom? Like, same thing. So Maaz went too. He broke his prayer. He left. But he had already told the Prophet what happened. And the Prophet ﷺ was very angry at him. Um, you, you're turning people away. You're turning up people away. So, like, it's clear. The prayer should be short. 
short. So the people in the old days used to go to Prophet Muhammad when I mean, they have a problem. Where do we go now? <laughs> to the board. Uh, continuing <laughs> when making uh, let's let's continue when making the closing I'm sorry I lost my place again where, where were we I'm sorry I'm sorry I Second paragraph. Second. He should read only Fatiha in the first two, the last two rakats. He should not lengthen the prayers for the followers. He should not lengthen his supplication. You know, after you do tashahud in your last, uh, when you're sitting down, sometimes like you can make dua. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Rabbana hablana min azwa. You can make all these duas at the end. So they're saying don't do all that if you're the imam. Keep it short. Don't start doing really long duas. Yes? Yeah, you can make dua. You can make dua. If the imam is doing the basic, you won't have time for all that. If you have time. Continuing on. Um, where were we again? I'm sorry. He should not lengthen his supplication in the last tashahud beyond the combined length of the tashahud itself and sending blessings on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah. So he should only do tashahud and Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. When making the closing salutation, the Imam should intend, when you make salam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum, what intention do you make? The Imam should intend that he's saying salam to the whole jama'ah. While the followers should intend by their salutation the return of his greeting. So they're replying to him and giving salam to the angels. Okay? Immediately after the salutation, the Imam should turn around and face the followers. Turn around. He should refrain, however, from doing so if there are women behind him. What does that teach us? A few things. Come on, I was waiting for someone to jump on this one. Sister Martha, what's this tell us? You're not supposed to look back at the women. That, oh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> should be what? A little louder, sister. No. The partition should be, he's saying if there's no partition, don't turn around, Imam. Stay where you're sitting. But it's better if the part, if the part, like basically, he's saying there was no partition there, right? So someone may say, look, there's no partition. But the parti partition is for, for serving another purpose. What the purpose is serving is what he's telling the imam not to do. Don't turn around. If the if there the women are there, if the women are there, keep facing that direction. But now what do we do? We have the partition open and the imam turns around. So either the imam doesn't turn around or we close the partition. Do you, you understand what he's saying? But the point is there so that the imam doesn't, as soon as he finishes prayer, his eyes are going straight back into the women's area. He's becoming the biggest fasik center of the whole everyone there as in like even like here uh, next thing so uh, either close it or the imam shouldn't turn around um, uh, none of the um, none of the congregants should rise till the imam rises okay this is more uh, adab this is more the adab like we should all sit and do our tasbih and a lot of people like it's like you're sitting on hot coal. They got to get up and leave. Right? So what he's teaching us is that after the prayer, we should sit julus. Sit. None of this is fard. None of this is wajib. By the way, remember what book we're studying. We're studying how to make your salat better in spirituality. He's saying sit down and wait until you finished your dhikr, your dua. Don't just run away from the prayer. Make dua. The best dua is after the prayer. That's the best dua. The imam can turn to leave from the right or the left side.